Hi guys, this is Crippley again with another pen review and today we are going to have a look at a very interesting pen by Opus 88. The pen has been sent to me by Opus 88 directly for review. Thank you very much for that. What's so special about the pen is that this is an eyedropper filler and I'll get back to that in a minute. That pen here is blue as you can see. The pen comes in three more color options at the moment. Uh, one is yellow, one is red and then there is also a sand slash gray color available. So it's those four colors and uh, then the pen has a number five nib on. It's a semi-transparent pen, sort of a demonstrator design, comes in fine, medium and broad. Is made. The nib is made by a German manufacturer. I could not really verify who it is, Jovo, Bock or who else, so I don't know that, but it supposedly has a German nib on. That so far for the basic stats of the pen, it comes in this quite large box here, as you can see, it's not exactly a small box saying Opus 88, I assume this is the Opus 88 logo, fine writing instruments, a black cardboard box that then slides out like that to expose sort of a fake leatherish box which clearly is some kind of carton. It says again Opus 88 fine writing instrument since 1977 so the company I was up to date unaware of them apparently has a quite long history of manufacturing writing instruments either for themselves or for other companies. I also don't know that I'm not a fountain pen historian. My job is to review this pen here, which I will be doing. The pen has a, uh, the box has a magnet lock here. Kind of nice. Flips up open like that. And you already see a bulb syringe that the pen comes with. The bulb syringe is like pulled in, uh, pushed in like that. When you get the pen, I already pulled it out because I used it to fill that eyedropper pen. You get a a small booklet saying Opus 88 fine writing instruments, Coloro, an eyedropper system fountain pen. And you see <coughs> that the company is a Taiwanese company. You get filling instructions once here in Chinese and then in English. So what is an eyedropper fountain pen? Essentially, you don't fill the ink into a cartridge or in, into a piston. It's not a piston filler. You unscrew the cap. You then unscrew the section, you then use this siren here to fill it with ink from an ink bottle and then you simply drop the ink into the fountain pen, into the barrel by pressing on here. Um, you screw the section back on, then it does have a seal. A, there's a rod inside with a valve that presses against the section and the feed mechanism that is in here in the section, sort of like a uh, Pilot Custom A23 or a Twist V Vox 700R, just that these are vac fillers and here you drop the ink in, but the ink shut off mechanism sort of works the same. You unscrew that um, turning knob here to make the valve unseal. And then you can write. And I'll say something about how well that works in my opinion in a second. Just note here that I don't know if that is a translation issue and stuff like that, but it says here notes when the pen is not in use, turn the cap bottom tail tightly. Then it explicitly says release the ink before taking a flight to avoid ink leakage. So I don't know if it's a Chinese English translation issue or if they really recommend you to empty actually the pen before you're flying. So yeah, that's just as a first hint towards that sealing mechanism. But as said, I'll get back to that in a minute. I just want to say something about this siren here and filling the pen. I've used that siren to fill the pen with diamine blue black. I personally don't find the siren that great. I mean, like it works perfectly to suck in ink and all that. But then after filling the pen, uh, to me personally, it feels like there's quite a lot of ink still left inside that glass tube here. And uh, then when flushing out this glass tube, I really 
have to flush that syringe like I don't know four five six seven times until there is finally or that until there finally was no blue black coming out anymore so I assume that there's quite some ink residue that gets somehow you know that just remains in that bulb after filling the pen so to me I just feel like while it works very well, I feel like it wastes or spoils a lot of ink. So I will in the future not use that anymore to fill the pen, but I will just use a regular syringe with a blunt needle because I just feel that it is more ink efficient because the ink that I then suck up and fill into the pen will actually end up into the pen in its entirety and not have maybe, I don't know, it, it, I mean, it's not going to be huge amounts of ink, but there was certainly a good amount of ink here left inside that bulb syringe which just didn't really feel right to me let's have a look at the pen finally after five minutes of technical pre-talk it's a fairly interesting design a pen that is thicker up here and then tapers ever so slightly down towards the end you do actually see that it does consistently taper down it does also taper a little bit towards that side having the thickest part of the pen about right here it's then sort of a slightly capped off design, not entirely capped off because it's slightly domed on both sides, a little bit more pointy here than there. And then as to the material, as said, it's available in a number of different colors. I have a look at the blue one right here. We have an interesting material combination of acrylic, those or resin, those, those see-through parts here are acrylic or resin, and those blue parts here are ebonite which is interesting many people do like ebonite because it warms nicely to the hand has an interesting interesting feeling to it and all that and that will be true for all the other different color options as well so the red one will have a uh, red ebonite here here and here and red acrylic here and here right so as said it is a slightly demonstrator uh, type design you do see through this acrylic here so you see the threading of this of this uh, rod that sits in here. You should technically also see the ink sloshing around in here. Now this is a dark blue ink in a dark blue pen, so you don't exactly see it that much, but you can see that there is a little ink that already that I already used up right here, and that is here where the ink starts sitting in the pen. You probably can see that a little bit. I think in the other colors, I've seen pictures, uh, you see it here, I've seen pictures of the pen online of other colors where you can see that a little bit better. Anyway, what you can see, but well, if you hold the pen up into daylight and stuff like that, you're gonna clearly always see how much ink there is left in the pen. So no issues with that, it's just the lighting in here. Um, and then uh, a very nice effect that we have right here is that that part of the cap is also transparent acrylic. So you do actually see the feet and the whole nib and all that in here. We have a clip here that has some ridging or whatever you want to call that here, like so, some sort of a texture on here, a little bit of a teardrop shape. Works very well, not too tight, not too stiff. I can totally see that working very well in a shirt pocket. Small metal ring up here. Then we have the ebonite material here, which has a very interesting texture to it, which also is more visible. Sorry, that was the camera shaking, which also is more visible on other colors of the pen. It has some small, small grains or dots or something like that inside which especially i think especially on this sand or gray color option is gives gives the pen a very very interesting effect it's also visible a bit better in real daylight then says opus 88 here on the cap then tapers down all the way here until here where we have a another silver ring and then that valve shut off valve or turning knob here which you can actually you know, unscrew like this in order to open up the valve and move the rod towards the backside so it, it gets away from the feet and ink will actually be starting to flow and I will shut that valve here now again. So that's that for the moment. Let's uncap the pen. That is my first issue with the pen and maybe also my biggest issue with the pen that it takes one, two, three, three and a half full turns to uncap the pen. I'm not getting tired of pointing out in any review that that is something that for me personally almost is a deal breaker with a fountain pen. 
to me personally. Like if it takes more than two full turns to uncap a pen, yeah, well, it certainly makes the pen totally unusable as a fast note taker. It still makes the pen usable for longer writing sessions or whatsoever, but I just wanted to point it out right here. It's something that I personally find pretty annoying with a fountain pen, and I do find that annoying with that pen here as well. Um, there is a small inner cap, which prevents the nib from drying out. It does an excellent job in doing that. I've never had an issue picking up that pen and it wouldn't write. So great on that end. Um, as to the weight distribution, um, the cap is fairly heavy and does carry a quite good amount or fair deal of the overall weight of the pen. The pen is a medium sized pen that in my hand, I'll do a size comparison in a minute, is very comfortable, plenty long enough to write unposted, no issue whatsoever. The pen cap does post, it posts very securely, also quite deep, but since the cap does have a or is considerably hefty, I do find that it makes the pen a bit unbalanced, a bit too top heavy. Would the cap post a little deeper, there would be more weight of the pen resting in here. So that would give the pen probably a more balanced feeling like that. You can write the pen like that, but I do find it kind of top heavy. All right. So now in order to fill the pen, and I'll do that <coughs> right here. I mean, I'm not going to fill the pen, but um, because it is filled, but I'll show you just how it works. I'm a bit careful because as I said, the pen has ink. You unscrew that section here from the barrel. You have a rubber O-ring here and then the feed mechanism in here. So that all does seal very tightly. That is very well made, looks very nice does its job very well. When we look in here, we see the, remove that so the camera focuses a little better. You see the ink in here and you also do see this rod in here that once screwed in, presses against that inner valve here and then supposedly seals the barrel and the feed so that no ink can actually leak. We screw all that back together nice and tight. We're looking at a section here that tapers quite considerably and then flares out a little bit down here. I find that section here on the thinner side of things, it's certainly, it shouldn't be any thinner for me. I thought uh, that I, I was guessing that it may be around the section width of a Pelican M200, M400. I then compared it and I found that I was quite right. My feeling proved me to be quite right. So the section is maybe a tad because it does a flare in here a little bit steeper. So it may be a tad wider than the one of a Pelican M200 slash M400. But I think it's fairly safe to say that you're going to have around that section diameter. Um, so if, if, if that, the 400 or 200 Pelican is a comfortable pen for you, then the Coloro 88 may also be a comfortable pen for you. If the Pelican M200 or 400 is too thin for you, then that pen may be too thin for you. May, because you can also hold it up here where it's a little bit thicker. There are some threads on here, of course, many threads as said, because it takes the cap forever to come off. So you can technically also hold the pen up here which I find a bit uncomfortable. You could hold it up here. So it's upon you to decide that. We have then a, a set number five nib here, comes in fine, medium and broad. I have to find here some scroll work, breather hole saying Opus 88, supposedly made by, made by a German uh, ink uh, nib manufacturer, um, of which I'm not exactly aware of who that is. The nib writes flawlessly. It's a true to the size fine. Very nice fine line, very smooth writing experience, feels almost slightly over polished, but not yet exactly. So it is really that butter on glass smooth feeling, not no feedback whatsoever. So it's a very nice, it's a very nice writing experience. Let's do some size comparisons quickly to my standard size reference pen Alami Safari. Capped pretty much the same length, uncapped. That might take a bit, no, I'm just kidding. Um, uncapped, it is a tad shorter than the Lamy Safari and I'll, well, I'll post them for you just to see that, but 
both pens do get fairly long posted but still the opus 88 is a tad shorter posted so now that you've seen that we are going to hop into a writing sample and uh, now i'll get to speak a little bit more about this ink shut off valve for a second ah, it just takes too long for me sorry um here we have the now it dried in a little bit in the course of the review that normally doesn't happen opus 88 Coloro with a fine nib on. That really is a fine nib. Um, medium wetness, I would say. Um, let me compare it to the fine of the Pelican that I have on here. So you see it's a pretty much true to the size fine, no issues with that. Of course you can regulate the wetness of that pen here by opening up the ink valve here. Um, the rod will then as said move back and you will get a slightly wetter line which does not uh, become apparent straight away. And that is one thing that I wanted to point out with this whole mechanism here. Um, and that is that I have tried to shut that valve and I was writing a whole A4 page. Um, I was doing, you know, loops like that. I was swatching ink like that. And I was doing that for really also quite a while. <clears throat> so I think all in all, I was trying to use up ink a good, let's say three A4 pages worth. And I have not experienced the pen running dry. So now it may be, about, I, saying if I close the valve it should seal completely I should be left with the ink that is now stocked here in the feed and I don't think that you can write a, like more than three a four pages with the ink that is left in the feed and since the pen hasn't run dry on me I do assume that that valve here does actually not seal the pen completely which again I've shown you that here in the in the manual in the beginning they seem, Opus 88 seem to recommend to you that you empty a pen, the pen before you're flying. So it does, all that indicates to me that the pen doesn't seal completely airtight. So cut the long story short, while you do feel an increase in ink flow when you open the valve, when you shut the valve back again, you're still able to write and it does not necessarily become super apparent that the pen runs dry whatsoever. So having that said, I do doubt that that pen does seal completely. It may, since it does seal probably in a bit, it may prevent the ink from burping and stuff like that when you have temperature or pressure differences but since it does not seal completely airtight because it will still keep on writing and writing and writing for at least three a four pages i wouldn't trust the pen in being a completely airtight seal so i just wanted to have that said as well otherwise the pen does cost around 80 euro it's not that widely available yet. In Europe, you can pick it up from papier and stift.de or papier und stift.de, mixing English a little bit here, or from fontoplumo.com. In the States, you can get it from Penchale. For instance, no affiliation to any of those three. I got that pen here sent from Coloro88 directly. Thanks again for that. Having that said, the 80 euro that it costs in Europe or the around a hundred dollars that Penchale I think charges for the pen, I think is on the upper scale of what you can charge for such a pen. You have an interesting filling mechanism, which is this eyedropper. You have an interesting uh, material combination here, the acrylic and the ebonite, which sort of makes it justifiable. I mean, you, you pay the same amount of money for a steel nib, the, um, what is it, Twispy VAC 700, for example, which also is just a steel nib with a fancy filling mechanism and all that. So I, th I feel it's still all right. You can charge it for the pen, but I do think it's on the pricier side of things. Having said that, or having that said, I hope this review was useful to you and I'll see you at the next review. Bye bye.